Guys, it's easy to knit a sweater. I'm telling you now, you're gonna be shocked at how easy it is and how much you're gonna be able to hit the ground running once all these little things click. And you're probably not even gonna be able to finish the video because you're just gonna know what to do. And actually, I recommend you don't finish the video because I do make a few mistakes at the very, very end, which I'll go over. But for the most part in this video, I'm just gonna cover the very, very basics of how to knit a sweater. And hopefully, um, this stuff will help you out as much as it helped me when I was first learning how to knit a sweater as well. There are a couple basic things that you are gonna have to know how to do before you start knitting a sweater because a sweater is kind of a accumulation of all of your knitting knowledge. So obviously you're going to have to know how to knit and purl, um, but you're also going to have to be able to knit in the round on both double pointed needles and circular knitting needles. If you only know how to use one of those, I promise you learning the other is not that difficult and I have videos that can help you out with both of those. I think that is about it, honestly. Um, there's a couple little tricks that I'll be showing you throughout the video. Um, if you've watched my tutorial on how to knit socks, that's surprisingly helpful in this video. If you know how to knit a sock, you're for sure going to be having no problems knitting a sweater. Honestly, I'm just going to dive right in and show you what I've done so far to get up to the point where we actually kind of create the sweater and kind of the most difficult bits. And hopefully by the end of the video, you will be able to knit a sweater. So here's my setup, and I'm just gonna walk you through what I've done so far. So the first thing I did was the body of the sweater, which is just 60 stitches, and I've just knit all the way up till I got the length that I wanted. And this is done on circular knitting needles. And the only thing, it's just pretty much knit stitch the whole way, except I started with a small um, one by one rib border here on the hem. So this knit one, purl one, all the way around for just a couple of rows. And then I just did the knit stitch for the rest of the body. Next I have the two sleeves. And the sleeves are pretty much the same thing as the body. It's just a one by one rib on the cuff. And I've done that for a couple of rows and then I built it up. The body of my sweater is just a solid straight up square. Um, with the sleeves though, I am doing an increase. You can kind of see it's slightly growing up at the top. So I started with just 30 stitches here for the cuff and then I slowly, once I was finished with the ribbing and I was onto the knitting, I started increasing by one stitch every other row up until I've ended it with 43 stitches on the top. The increase for this sleeve, I'll show you, is right here. And I've got a separate video up that shows you how to do an increase when you're knitting in the round like this. Um, there's a couple different methods of doing it. There's ones that are more invisible, ones that are more visible. This one I like because it's very subtle. It's not too intrusive and it's easy to do too. So again, if you know how to knit in the round on double pointed needles and on circular knitting needles, then you know how to knit a sweater and the rest of the process is just assembling it together. And so that's what we're gonna do here. Here's a slightly better camera angle, hopefully. Now how we combine these is a process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a couple stitches from the sleeve, a couple stitches from right here, from right here and right here, and we're gonna put those stitches on hold. And how you can put stitches on hold, I'm just gonna use a safety pin, but they actually sell like a different like hooks, yarn hooks and that kind of thing. But honestly, a safety pin will work just as fine. What we do is we're gonna slip a couple stitches off from right here, right here, right here, and right here, and that's gonna form the armpits of the sweater. So it'll eventually it'll all be connecting like this. And where the stitches are on hold, we just slip those off on the safety pin. And then when we're finished with the whole sweater, you'll just weave those all together or you can graft them all together. So I'm gonna take the first sleeve, take my safety pin, and I'm just gonna slip a couple of these stitches off. And I'm gonna be very careful not to stab myself with the needle here. And the number of stitches that you slip off is again gonna depend on the size of your sweater. This one is pretty small, so I'm only gonna slip off a couple 
to form the armpit. I'm gonna close the safety pin. So I've slipped off six stitches and they're just gonna hang out here on this safety pin until the very end. I've only got uh, five stitches left on this needle. So just to make it a little easier, I'm gonna slip these onto the next needle here, just to make it a little less chaotic. So there's that. I'm just gonna let that hang out there and I'm not gonna do the body yet. We're just gonna do the same thing to the next sleeve. So I've got my safety pin again and I'm gonna slip off six stitches. Where you slip this off is gonna, again, depend on the type of sweater you're knitting and what the pattern calls for or how you want it to look. For me, it lines up perfectly with my increases that I have and it's good to have the working yarn be right here on the end because eventually we're gonna use this working yarn with the grafting of the armpits. So here is five stitches and here is six stitches and I've managed not to stab myself. Close that up. And we're just gonna let it hang out there for the rest. And same thing with this. I just have a couple stitches left on this needle. Just to make things easier, I'm gonna slip them back onto this other double pointed needle next door. Now with the body, because it's still on these circular knitting needles, putting stitches on hold is gonna be just slightly different. How you're gonna to wanna to do it is situate it like this, and you have your working yarn right here on the right side, right hand needle, working yarn. Um, we're gonna slip six stitches off of that right hand side. So you've just knit these past six stitches. These are the last six stitches that we should be slipping off. So take your safety pin and I'm gonna turn everything around like this just to make it easier for myself. Um, I'm gonna push the stitches up to the end of the needle here. And we just need to slip six stitches off. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Close the safety pin, and that is perfect. I'm gonna readjust this all here. So now we've, so we've slipped off these six stitches and they're just gonna hang out there on the safety pin till the end. And now we have to do the same thing again, but on this side of the body. And this is where math unfortunately comes into play. I know it's atrocious. So my whole project is 60 stitches all the way around. And we're gonna put six stitches on hold here, six stitches on hold here. So 60 minus six minus six equals 48. So if I buy two halves is 24. So 24 here, 24 here. This is where we're at. We're gonna knit 24 stitches until that's where we'll get to the next halfway point. But we're gonna actually knit those six stitches. So 24 plus six, we're gonna knit 30 stitches. And then go back, take those six stitches on hold and then finish off. I have completely made this more confusing than it actually is. Honestly, you can just eyeball it. I'm a huge proponent of that, obviously, as you know. <laughs> so let's just dive into it. So we're gonna knit 30 stitches, basically, and then go back and put those six stitches on hold. So since these are on hold, our working yarn is already over here, so we don't have to worry about the yarn carrying over those six, six stitches or anything like that. So I'm just gonna knit 30 stitches straight through. So one, two. All right, so there's 30 stitches that I've just done. And 
And thanks to the magic of math, I know that I can just slip off the last six stitches that I just knit, put those on my safety pin. So I'm gonna do that right now. Scoot these up to the end, open my little safety pin, and slip off six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have not managed to stab my finger once. I had four different chances to do that, and I can't believe I didn't do that. It's a miracle. With this second set of six stitches on my safety pin here, I'm just gonna go right ahead with my working yarn here on the left. I'm gonna go right in to finish knitting this round, just because we want it all to be even. So we should be able to knit 30 stitches, and then we'll be right back on the first six stitches that we placed on hold. So I'm now at the end of that row here. I shouldn't say row, I should say round. I'm just gonna reposition my needles here, get everything nice and even on my circular knitting needle. So you should be able to now take the six stitches that are on hold here on this safety pin, they should be able to line up perfectly with these ones that are on hold, and then these ones and these ones. And again, we're not gonna do any weaving or grafting yet, we're gonna do that at the very end, but just visually it's a nice way of lining up how it's all supposed to look in the end. And with everything in position now, we're in the perfect spot. We've got our working yarn here on this needle, and we are now gonna do the combining of everything together. So here's the working yarn from the body, and here is the next stitches that I'm going to knit, and we're just gonna start knitting. And eventually we're gonna combine everything onto the circular knitting needles. It's gonna become a little bit crowded, but it's totally fine. It's also gonna feel a little bit loose at first, especially here where it's technically connecting, but not really connecting, but that's totally normal and fine. It'll start to tighten up as you do more and more rounds. So I'm just gonna knit to the end of this needle here, this first double pointed needle. And when we reach the end, we'll just slip it and move right on to the next needle. the end of the needle. I'm just gonna knit this last stitch off of it and now we can discard this double point needle, turn the work and go straight on to this next one. You do have to be careful of the end of your circular knitting needle because things are gonna be moving around a lot and you're gonna be adding on a bunch more stitches. So just make sure that you're keeping everything kind of even and especially where, see already where I've combined it, it's already kind of coming apart kind of or creating a lot of slack. So just make sure that you're kind of scooching everything down as you go along and you're not creating any huge gaps or holes or anything like that in your work. Nothing's gonna, nothing bad is gonna happen. It's just gonna be awkward for you, which is fine because that's what knitting is. So continuing on this needle, I'm just gonna keep knitting it off.
So I've reached the end of that needle. I'm just taking that off and putting it aside and I'm pushing everything down along the circle needle. And if you kind of lay everything out to get kind of a bird's eye view here, you can see that we're about to make the connection now. So we've reached the other side of those six stitches that we placed on hold. Sort out this working yarn situation here. So we've got safety pin here, safety pin here. They're coming together like this. And we are going to keep knitting now with the other half of the circular knitting needle. Now a very quick sidebar, which is more of like an inventory check. <laughs> um, so the yarn that I was knitting the body with is this pile of yarn here, which is not gonna last me very long. Um, so this is the yarn that I've used to connect everything. But luckily, since I'm now at this point of the armpit, I've met back up with the working yarn that I used for this sleeve and I still have it connected. So I'm gonna cheat and I'm just gonna switch the yarns. So I'm just gonna stop using this as my working yarn and I'm just gonna go straight into using this as my working yarn. It's not gonna cause any issue, honestly. It's not gonna be noticeable, but it's not something that you would ever see written in a pattern, I don't think. Like, oh, pick up the working yarn from the yarn that is less run out of, you know? So, I mean, it's a situation that is totally unique to me. I don't know how your yarn is holding out, but I'm just gonna discard that for now. Um, it'll come in handy for grafting later on. I'm just gonna pick up the working yarn from this sleeve because I've had bunch more of it left over and I'm gonna keep knitting. So this is the part where we're making that final sort of connection here. We've got safety pins here. So we're just gonna keep knitting off right back onto the body. And as you go along, it becomes very, very satisfying. It's very fun to go from like a huge mess of like multiple needles. You saw all those double pointed needles I had to just simplifying it, putting it all on these circular knitting needles. So we're knitting around and I'm about to hit that second set of six stitches on hold. And as you can see, my next sleeve is totally not at all in position to be grafted on. So I need to act fast here. Got two stitches left on this. So we've got safety pin here, safety pin here. This is where we're gonna connect and we're gonna pick up off this needle right here. So let's finish up here. One and two. Let's space everything out. This left hand needle on the circular knitting needle can be discarded, or not discarded, but just kind of set aside. I'm gonna space out my stitches though so it doesn't get too bunched up anywhere. And now we can pick up this sleeve, which is right here. So make sure your safety pins are in position right here. And this is the needle that you're gonna use to knit and connect to the body. And there we go. So here I've reached the end of this first double pointed needle, knit off the last one and I can just discard that needle, turning everything around carefully getting everything evened out here so it's not too bunched up. And I have just one last double pointed needle to knit off and then we're gonna be totally set for finishing up basically the rest of the whole project. It's, it just feels so good um, as you're knitting along, getting rid of the double pointed needles. Um, I mean, some people, you can, instead of leaving these on double pointed needles, some people put it on like 
they just put it on scrap yarn. So you, they'll put the entire end of the sleeve on hold with just a piece of yarn, which I mean, it, sometimes it, it looks easier. It feels easier definitely because you don't have so many needles sticking all over the place. For me, it's just faster just to leave it on double pointed needles and just buy a bunch of extra double pointed needles at the craft store. So here's the end of this row here. It's a little loose here because we've got the end of a working yarn here from the sleeve, which is fine. And I'm gonna slide everything down. And we're ready to bring back in the circular knitting needle again. You can already see it's like starting to look like a sweater. We've got armholes, we've got like armpits. It's Amazing. So we've got working yarn here, which is from the end of this sleeve. And that's not the one that we're gonna use. We're gonna just keep using this one, this new bundle that I've been using. But um, I am gonna be pulling everything a little bit tight here, just so we don't have any weird gaps or anything like this at the end. Scoot everything up and go right into making that connection with the body. And then once we are finished with the next, I guess, 30 stitches, we'll be right back where we started at the beginning of a new row. So I've just reached the end now of, I guess, the front and I'm back almost to the armpit. I'm just gonna go right into knitting the next row here just to make it a little more solid. I'm gonna knit all the way around one more time to build it up just a little bit more and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so I've gone around a couple of times. I've done about three additional rounds just to kind of make these connections a little more solid and it's really starting to look more like a sweater and it's starting to come together nicely. And so now at this point, we get to do the shaping of the shoulders up to the neckline. So we're almost finished. Um, all that we have to do now is do decreases right here and right here and on the back and bring everything together to form the neckline and finish it off. So we're doing decreases. You're gonna want stitch markers unless you can easily read where you're doing your decreases. Now, where you place your stitch markers is gonna depend completely on whatever pattern you're following, whatever the size of the sweater is, um, however much math you wanna do <laughs> and get involved in that. For me, I'm just gonna do my decreases right where I added on the sleeves to the body. So I'm gonna place one right here and I'm gonna place another stitch marker right here. Flipping over on the back. We'll do a decrease right here. The last decrease will be right here. So I know right when I get up to those stitch markers, that's where I'll do my decrease while I'm knitting. Now there's two types of decreases. Well, actually there's probably a million types of decreases, but the two main components of a decrease is there's a decrease that will move your work to the right and a decrease that moves your work to the left. So the one that moves everything to the right is just your normal knit two stitches together, easy breezy. The one that moves everything to the left is called the SSK decrease or the slip slip knit decrease. You're basically doing the same thing. It's just a little bit um, different <laughs> and it moves your work to the left. So as we're doing this shaping here on the sweater, we're gonna be utilizing two different types of decreases because the stitches on this left-hand side of the sweater or the left-hand side when you're looking at it, they need to be moving to the right because we've got all these stitches on the arm that need to be moving to the right. And then all the stitches on the right-hand side of the sweater right here need to be moving this way. So um, like for this one, it's gonna be uh, an SSK 
decrease, which is gonna move everything to the left. I'm gonna show you what all that looks like, obviously, as we go along. But for now, we've just reached our first stitch marker right here. And for this, we're gonna do a knit two together decrease, which is gonna move everything to the right. I've stopped three stitches before my marker, so we can do a decrease and then just knit this one spare stitch on its own. So with each marker, I'm gonna stop three stitches before I hit the marker. Hey, everybody. Um, I go over this at the end of the video, but I thought I would also just leave a little note in here that I'm about to make a big mistake in the knitting here. Um, the main thing is this decrease that I'm doing. So the two stitch decrease, Right now I'm doing it before the stitch marker. When I'm doing the two stitch decrease, I actually need to be doing the decrease after the stitch marker. So I should just slip the stitch marker over and then knit one stitch and then do the two stitch decrease, knit two together. And then everything would have been so fine and this sweater would have worked out perfectly. Instead, I don't do that. I do the decrease before the stitch marker and I'm not gonna say it ruins the entire thing, but it, it doesn't end up, you'll see how it looks in the end basically. And I explain it a little further, but just so you know, if you're following along as I'm doing this, don't do this decrease before the stitch marker, do it after the stitch marker. You'll thank me later. So to do our knit two together decrease, this is the easiest type. You just take your right hand needle, scoop off those two stitches here and knit them off together, just like this. Pull that off, everything's a little tight. And now I'm gonna knit that last stitch before the marker, ta-da. And what you do with the marker, don't knit the marker, just slip it off onto the right needle like this and let it dangle there. And keep moving on. So now I'm gonna continue knitting straight on. We're going around the sleeve here. And for the next stitch marker, we'll be doing the SSK decrease because we'll be on the opposite side of the sweater once we get to there. So now I'm at my second stitch marker. I've stopped three stitches before I get there and we want this decrease to move to the left. So to do that, we're gonna do the SSK stitch. This stitch is fine. You do the SSK before the stitch marker. There's no problem in this bit. The SSK stitch, you slip off these two stitches as if you're gonna knit them. And then take your left needle and stick it through those two stitches like this. Come up along the front. And then you're just gonna knit them off. So wrap your yarn around the right hand needle. And scoop that through those two stitches like this. And then we'll just knit the next stitch like normal, slip off the stitch marker onto the needle, and then just continue knitting. Now I'm at my third stitch marker. I've got three stitches left, and we want these stitches to move to the right for my decrease. So I'm gonna do the knit two stitches together again. So put those two together knit them off just knit my next stitch like normal slip off my marker and cruise right along um, the next one we're going to go right around the sleeve again and we'll be at our last stitch marker now I'm at my fourth and final stitch marker and I'm going to do, we want it to move to the left. I always have to kind of double think that again because I always lose track. So I want these stitches to move to the left. So we're shaping the shoulder this way. So we're gonna do the slip slip knit stitch or the SSK decrease. So like we did before, we're going to slip these stitches off as if we were gonna knit them put them uh, through the left needle like this to make a little cross, and then wrap the yarn around the right hand needle and knit those two off. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna move everything to the left. 
So now you're just gonna keep knitting your decreases like that um, for as many rounds as you need to to shape up your shoulders and the neckline. Things are gonna get uh, decreased pretty quickly. I'm almost coming up to my first stitch marker where I can do my decrease. And you'll just see that everything's tightening up very quickly. Um, so I'm gonna do that for a couple of rounds and I'll check back with you afterwards and we can see what it looks like. Okay, so now here's where I'm at. A lot has happened. Um, mainly I've made a big mistake <laughs> on this project. So I'm almost finished. I'm first, I've, I've moved everything off of the circular knitting needle because it got too small. Um, I'm now just pretty much, I have the right size for the neck and I'm just gonna finish that off and bind it off. But I wanted to show you a mistake I made that I'm gonna to have to go back in the video and leave a little disclaimer not to do it so you don't make the same mistake I did. But you can actually see it right here. It's this little ridge right here. Now this ridge is nice, but it's just in the wrong spot. Um, if I wanted the ridge to be going like this, I should have put it up way higher up on the shoulder instead of right here cutting in on the chest. And the reason that is happening is because I put my stitch marker here. These are the stitches that I was knitting two together and so it's bringing everything to the right. But the problem is I was doing knitting two together before my stitch marker. So where you see that ridge, that's where I had had my stitch marker. So I was knitting two together right before I went to the stitch marker. So it was taking two stitches from the body and putting it under the sleeve section when really it should have been the other way around. So I obviously did that for a couple of rows before I noticed my mistake. And then I went back and tried to correct it and it looks slightly better here now. It looks slightly better. So instead of a bunch of columns from the body going, disappearing underneath the sleeve, the those columns from the body, the few remaining ones that I had are continuing on here and the sleeve is disappearing under that column. So if that's the effect you're going for, which is what I was doing, you need to knit two together after your stitch marker instead of before. But luckily that wasn't a problem on the side that I was doing the SSK decrease on, the slip two stitches and knit them together one. Um, for that, I was fine. Um, you do the SSK right before you hit the stitch marker and it sends the sleeve nice, perfectly underneath the stitches from the body. So I have this nice uniform line here. I've got the sleeve going right into the body and disappearing there. And so that looks fine. Now what I'm gonna do is take off these stitch markers because I'm done doing my decreases, thankfully. There's less options to make a mistake. I'm going to take off these stitch markers and I'm going to knit a couple rounds of a one by one rib for the neck. And then I'm going to finish that off and then I'll show you what it looks like. I don't hate it. <laughs> I actually like it. It's turned out all right. And honestly, it's a child size sweater, so a kid would be lucky to have a sweater at all. Um, I went ahead and did just a couple rounds of a neck here, uh, one by one ribbing, and then I just cast it off like normal. Hopefully this uh, video was helpful for you in whatever project that you are gonna embark on now. Honestly, the most difficult parts for me were just kind of conceptualizing how two sleeves and the body come together and how you do that. Um, I didn't show you in the video, but I just went ahead and wove my armpits together. But if you want to make that kind of more officially woven together, you can do a Kitchener stitch on those, um, which there's videos that can help you out with that. And I think I go over the Kitchener stitch in my sock tutorial part two. Um, again, links to all that will be down below in the description. So good luck with your sweaters. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was all helpful and I will see you next time. And also don't forget to subscribe and like the video.